This is Algebra 2 with Trig, 1C.3. We're going to talk about complex numbers today. Not all quadratic equations have real solutions. That means when we solve for x, you might have an answer that's not actually on the number line. So, for example, x squared equals negative 1. That has no real solutions. If you think about what x squared means, that's the parent function we've graphed in the past. Down here, touching the origin. Make that line a little thicker so it's actually touching the origin. And we're looking to see where does it touch negative 1. The parabola touches the line y equals negative 1 nowhere. So there are no real solutions. 2 overcome this problem, mathematicians create an expanded system of numbers using the imaginary unit of i. So we're going to call i square root of negative 1. So listen to that again. i is the square root of negative 1. In the past, when you've had a square root of a number that was negative, we said it had no real solution. But now we're going to be able to work with it by pulling out the negative in the square root and calling it i. At the same time, we're going to call i times i, that's i squared, i times i is a value of negative 1. Let's look at the numbers root 3 times root 3. What does that equal? Root 3 times root 3, you get the values that are inside, and we get 3. What's root 5 times root 5? When you square a square root, you get the value that's inside. So what's the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1? You get the value that's inside. We're going to call that negative 1, using all the same properties we have in the past. Okay, so if square root of negative 1 is i, and the square root of negative 1 is i, then i times i is going to equal negative 1. i times i is just i squared. That equals negative 1. So we're going to be able to use that in our future calculations. So now we're going to use that property to solve our equations. So we have x squared equals negative 13. So we know that we need to take the square root of both sides. So that's x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 13. You have to use plus or minus whenever you take the square root of both sides. Now we've talked about factors. Do we have factors that work in this situation? Well, we typically call 13 prime, but it has a negative, so we're going to say negative 1 times 13. We're going to pull that negative out, and we know that the square root of negative 1 is actually the value of i. So there's our final answer. When you're taking the square root of a negative, you're just going to bring the negative outside as an i value. And now we can consider that finished, rather than being up here and saying there's no real solution. Our, our solution is not on the number line, it's actually an imaginary number. So we move over to our next example. You start thinking about what you need to do first. What do you see? How would you handle it? We're going to subtract the 18. That gives us negative 90. 
We're going to divide by 2. So negative 90 divided by 2 is negative 45. Then we'll take the square root of both sides. That'll give us x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 1 times 45. So negative 45 can be broken down into negative 1 times 45. So that's going to allow us to pull the i out in front. That square root of negative 1 comes out as an i. So the inside is going to be 9 times 5. That's what the 45 breaks down into. And we know the square root of 9 is 3. 3i three are on the outside of the radical, and 5 is on the inside of the radical. It's the radicand. Notice that the plus or minus come first. Because it's plus or minus things that were from the square root. The 3 is in front of the variable. It's like saying 3x. We wouldn't say x3. We would say 3x. So in this case, we'll say 3i. And it comes before the radical. So that's just solving equations, and when you take a square root of a negative, we're usually stuck with that, but now we have a process so we don't have to call it no real solution. With complex numbers, we're going to work with those just using all the properties we already know of. A complex number is written in the form of A plus or minus BI. A is your real number, and the plus value or the minus value is the imaginary. BI is the imaginary number. So we always put the real numbers first and the imaginary numbers second in our answer. That's important. You've got to be in this format at the end. So let's take a look. You know how to do this. What, what do you see here, besides it being too blurry? What do you see? We have 12 minus 11i. We don't really need parentheses for that. Plus, you can think about it as distributing. You're going to multiply and still have a negative 8. You're going to multiply and still have a positive 3i. So you don't need parentheses for this example at all. So we can collect our like terms and collect our like terms. There we have 4 minus 8i. The imaginary numbers come second. The real numbers come first. So we'll come over here to the next one. What do you see here? What might you do? The math isn't difficult, but knowing what to do is a challenge. In this situation, a lot of people make a mistake and they end up foiling. This is not foil. This is clearly subtraction. This is not multiplication. You might distribute your negative through, which is a form of multiplication, but this is not a binomial times a binomial. This is 15 and a negative 9i. Distribute through to get negative 24 and a positive 9i. So your negative 9i and your positive 9i are going to cross off, and we'll have the answer of negative 11.
we're going to call that negative 9. Negative 9 looks better. Okay, on the flip side. Now we're multiplying. Take a look at why this is multiplication and the other was not multiplication. The other had two binomials with a plus in between. This does not have a plus. This does not have a minus in between the parentheses. So this is multiplication. We're going to use all our normal rules, so we're not learning anything different. However, whenever you have i squared, we're going to turn that into the number negative 1. So what we're going to do here first is take our five, negative 5i five and multiply it to the 8. Like you normally would. You distribute that in. And we get negative 40i and positive 45i squared. 5 times 5 is 45, and i times i is i squared. No answer will you give us will have an i squared in it. No answer should have i squared in it. x squared is okay, but not i squared. i squared is actually the value of negative 1. So it's not minus 1. It's not 45 minus 1. It's 45 times the negative 1. When you multiply, the negative 1 times 45, you get a negative 45, and we've been told to always write our real numbers first. So the imaginary values go second. So you got to rearrange it. Okay, what do you see here with the third, or this example? Because you have two binomials set up next to each other, this is a multiplication problem. We use FOIL to calculate that or to determine that. So the front number times the front number gives us negative 32. O stands for outer, so the negative 8 and the negative 7i gives us a positive 56i. Positive 2i times a positive 4 is a positive 8i. And 2 times 7 is 14. And i times i is i squared. So we foiled it through. We have our four terms like normal. The middle terms you're going to be able to collect. They're like terms. Fifty-six i and eight more i's give you sixty-four i's. Minus fourteen times negative one. which two negatives make a positive. Now what looks like our next step here? Put the real numbers together and be sure that they're first. So that's negative 18 plus 64i. Think about what we're doing. If you're at home and you need to pause the video, rewind it and listen to it again. Understand where these different numbers are coming from. Okay, the last example. 
we're working with dividing complex numbers, just like we did with radicals earlier. When dividing complex numbers, you should multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the conjugate. The conjugate of a plus bi is a minus bi. Notice how I write my eyes. My eyes are always curved a little bit. They're not a straight line. So try to make your eyes curved. will help you not mistake those for a one. So what do we need to do for our final example? We're going to look for our conjugate. This is 5 minus i. So we're going to do 5 plus i. That would be the conjugate. The only thing that's different is the sign in between. Some people make a mistake and they think they have to do the conjugate of the top also. But no, we're allowed to have an i on top. We're not allowed to have an i on bottom. So you got to continue with whatever you did to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So it's a value of 1 you're multiplying this original problem by. And now we foil it out. 3 times 5 is 15. 3 times i is 3i. 4 times 5 is, four, or is 20i. And 4 times i is 4i squared. Now, what do you think is true about the bottom? 5 times 5 is 25, plus 5i, minus 5i, a negative i squared. What would you suggest? So I'm going to group together my 3i and my 20i, just like you would with any like terms. 23i plus 4, and what is i squared? 25, a positive 5i and a negative 5i crosses out. So I'm left with a minus i squared, and i squared is negative 1. So be careful there, don't call it 25 plus a negative 1. It's 25 minus a negative 1. Well, here we have a negative 4 and a positive 15. That gives us 11. This is 25 plus a negative, so 25 plus 1, so 26. And the format we're supposed to leave this in is real numbers up front and imaginary numbers second. 